Hey, and welcome back to the Three Day Work Weeks podcast. I'm Kate, and today I am going to be playing for you an interview of me on Jamie Atkinson's podcast. The reason that I'm sharing this with you is because I think that it is really good insight into who I am, what this business is all about, but most of all, how I help you with those three-day work weeks because I just want to show you what is possible for your life. I want more friends with me in this three-day work week life where we can work our businesses when we want to. We are not like employees of our business. We are truly owners of our business. So I hope you enjoy this interview and it gives you some insight into what Kate Waldo and Co. is, what we do, and how we help you. And if you have any questions, email us at support at katewaldoandco.com or you can shoot us a DM, but email's best. So let's get into it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Six Figure Podcast Rebels. I'm here today. You got me, Jamie, instead of Brittany for a change because sometimes I like to come in and do cool, awesome podcast interviews. And it's my show, so I can do what the heck I like. Isn't that fun? So my guest today is actually a super exciting guest because not only is she somebody that does amazing things with her business, she really pioneered the idea of using systems to help six-figure entrepreneurs really have a proper three-day work week, not just regular typical shorter work week that some people talk about a legit three-day work week and uh, i'm excited to bring her on the show because not only is she a friend but she's also a past client who has come through some of our processes with creating podcasts and so she's got probably some really good insights to share about systems the podcasting and how this has worked entirely for her so please welcome my amazing efficiency expert and lovely guest kate waldo jones kate how are you doing welcome to the show hi i'm great how are you Doing very well. So Kate, just to get us started and jumps right into the interview, tell us, a lot of people talk about shorter work weeks. They talk about this idea of freedom. And I think that a lot of entrepreneurs truly struggle with this. It's what a lot of them want, but they have this challenge in their mind where they feel like their to-do list is always going. There's never enough time. They are not enough and not able to complete the things that's going on. So talk to us a little bit about how you help people. And also, what do you see are these typical challenges that six-figure entrepreneurs are facing when they want this? Yeah. So when you step into the entrepreneurial world, you're all excited because you get to make your own schedule and you're your own boss and you can take days off when you want to. And then your to-do list stacks up and up and up and there's a million to-do lists and they're all over the place and they're on your phone note they're your iphone notes and they're in like evernote and they're maybe written on a piece of paper somewhere and it's all over the place and bringing everything together while also doing all the aspects of the business the marketing the bills the social media the client interaction actually delivering the product or service that you're trying to do it all just adds up so much and to get to that six figure point you you have got to have already created some type of systems in your business there's no way you could get to that six figures without it but you probably still are in the trenches at least a little bit in your business and so where my sweet spot is removing you from the day-to-day of your business so that you can, a three-day work week is what we talk about, but you can make that look however you want. If you want a couple hours, five days a week, totally fine. If you want to do two 12-hour days, that also works, however you want it to look, but really being able to reclaim that free time that you we're going after in the beginning of why you probably started your business. Hopefully you also had a a strong passion for what you do. We don't really work with anyone who's not super passionate and inspired in what they do, but you also had that dream and that aspiration of having that flexibility and free time to spend your time however you want, work on special projects, spend time with your family, hang out with your friends, travel, whatever that is. So that's our sweet spot of what we really like to do and help entrepreneurs get to, especially in that range. And I think it's so important because a lot of us, we really struggle and you're dead, right? What happens is what got you to six figures was you doing everything. 
And unfortunately, that is also what holds you back from growing to the next level. And really getting to multiple six figures or seven figures is really about leverage. And that looks like systems and teams and processes that kind of go in place. And so I'm so excited to talk about this topic because it's a big thing that we focused a lot in our own business in the last couple of 12 to 18 months in terms of helping us to try and grow. Where do you see the biggest sort of belief or challenge when people are coming in at this level? Where do you find that they get stuck the most? Delegating and offloading and trusting that process because you've probably done a little bit of it you would have, it's very challenging to get to six figures without having anyone ever help you on anything at all, but it's probably still a big challenge for you. So you don't know who to trust, what to tell them to do. You also are in that loop, that hamster wheel of, it would take you much more time to teach someone how to do the thing than for you to just do it yourself. So you just do it yourself and then they don't have anything to do. And then they're sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Like, why am I here? I don't feel like I'm helpful and this is not fulfilling at all. So that would probably be the biggest trap that I see. And people say that all the time. Like I've heard that so many times. Oh, it would just take me too much time to go in and train somebody else to do this than to just do it myself. And I think it's interesting because for me, I see that as two challenges. It's one, maybe your stuff is too complex and maybe you need to simplify it. Two, you need to obviously sit down and make a system. But thirdly, sometimes people just aren't hiring good quality people. I'm sure you probably agree with this, Kate. Like what makes a great system is a great operator at the same time. And a lot of the time, since I've started hiring more A player people, we co-create systems. I'm not always Mm -hmm. the person that is doing that. What would you say is the sort of steps or processes that people need to go through in order to be able to create this three-day work week for themselves if they have a six-figure business? Yeah. First, creating the vision. What do you even want? Because you aren't going to, you're going to struggle a lot more to create that three-day work week or create that whatever your dream life is. If you don't even know what it is, how do you get to point B if you don't even know what point B is? So creating that vision for yourself of what does your ideal life look like, and then breaking that down backwards to your ideal month, week, day, and how do we create that? Then it's really doing a collecting of all the things. This is, so I started just a little bit of background. I started in the entrepreneurial world as a professional organizer and organizing people's homes, businesses, the actual physical items in them. And then it took me into the systems and operations side of things, which I love so much. Metaphorically, collecting all the items together and sorting them out and then deciding what do you keep? What do you toss? What do you offload to someone else? Because like you talked about, you can create all the systems in the world, but if they're complex systems that are very challenging to follow, or they are totally unnecessary systems that don't even get you to your end goal, it just doesn't matter. Like we were talking about on my episode when you were on my podcast about like social media, particularly Instagram, what is, what are you doing it for? Like to what end? If you don't even know with something like that, it shouldn't be on your to-do list. Same thing with the bigger vision of your life. To what end? (laughs) What Make sure that you're headed on a path that you actually want to be on. But so we, we collect everything, we declutter, and figure out where things need to go. And then we create systems around what's left, but really simple systems, things that my dad, who has never been on social media, doesn't know what the difference between all the social media platforms are and not super tech savvy, that he could come in and read step-by-step or watch step-by-step the workflow that you put together and go through that process very easily. Or we can off we can offload to technology that is really smart technology that never alienates a customer or client they always feel really seen heard appreciated loved that's my favorite 
<laughs> I like it. Yeah, you got to make people feel seen and loved. And similarly, sometimes a lot of people's tech does the opposite. It repels them and it makes them feel mm -hmm. worse You know, if you don't mm -hmm. have the system set up correctly. Okay, in terms of building these processes out, why do you think so many people have that sort of hesitancy or worry about it? Is there a little bit of fear that's there? And why do people not prioritize trying to get themselves to a comfortable work-life balance? I think that often, most often, it's that people don't even know what's possible because every culture is different, but especially in America, we have students all over the world, but especially in American society, there's so much glory put on hard work. And that, I don't really believe in hard work. I don't really believe in hustle. I believe in putting in work, putting in time. I absolutely do. There's no way that you can create something without effort and energy into something. But does everything have to be hard always? Absolutely not. So that's where I think I see most people get caught up is they're at that six figure mark and they're trying to figure out how can we sustain this and grow it without me as a person falling apart. And they just get overwhelmed with, I have to do the work. And don't get me wrong. I get in that too, where I'll say my job for the day is to go to the beach and work out. And <laughs> if I feel like putting up some Instagram stories, I can do it. I still have voices in the back of my head that are like, you should be working. You need to be working harder, whatever. But reframing that working smarter and not harder, you can be shifting that with the intention of that you get to be in alignment with your true purpose and you can serve people so much better that way. You can't serve people well when you're all over the place and you're spread so thin and you have a million responsibilities. Yeah, I think that's super important. And I think if you enjoy your life and you enjoy the things you do and work isn't a chore, it's something that you get to do as opposed to you're forced to do it every day and it causes a lot of pain in your life, then you're a lot more refreshed and you're a lot more excited to do it. And that allows you Absolutely. to be able to accomplish more as well. Yeah. And that's funny that you say that in that way, because now our, one of the metrics with my team is ha having fun. And so the, at the top of the funnel for me is creating these video podcasts and having fun. That's my goal. That's what everything that we're trying to do is all about. So it's cool how this podcast program ties into that to where, because I know that I can show up the best when I'm having fun and I'm just doing the things that I truly want to do. And that's absolutely possible for every entrepreneur. Yeah. I love that. I love that a lot. Okay. If somebody wants to understand about what the next step is that they can take to reclaim this, they're sat here listening to this and they're like, Oh my God, you're so right. I am drowning right now. I'm beginning to hate my business. I really want to get more of that three-day work week or adjusting how I do things, what's the best way that they can get help in figuring out how to accomplish that? If you want help, we've got tons and tons of free content. So listen to our podcast, The Three-Day Work Weeks for Millennial Entrepreneurs. Go there, binge that. They're short episodes, short and sweet. So you get a feel for how we do things. And then we have our program, Smarter Not Harder, that if you're interested in that, you can find all about that on our website, katewaldoandco.com. I love it, Kate. And just for context, for anybody that wants to come and listen to the show, what's your kind of favorite episode or what is the sort of main content that you talk about on the show that's really interesting for people to come and check out? It could just be a general theme of what you talk about. My favorite episode is actually with someone that you and I both know well, Wei Hung. So he did, oops. My, my podcast just started playing. <laughs> we did an episode together that I need to find the name because it's not popping up at the top of my head, but it was a really, it was a really good like reframe triggers or opportunities. So that's episode 21. That is one of my favorite ep episodes. You and I both know a lot about what Wei does and that 
like we we have a big discussion about why like so many people can be opposed to I, know, I don't even want a three day work week, but why is it important to get there so that then you can reframe everything and make more choices that are more in alignment with what you really want. You're not making choices based on things you have to do. Love it. Super important. So KateWaldoandCo.com you said was the website? Yes, it's A-N-D-C-O. Yeah, Love Waldo, it. like where's Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> Kate Waldo and Com. Kate Waldo and Co.com. Let me go. Let me yes. say that a little slower so I don't get it wrong there. <laughs> yeah. So guys, head on over there. I'm sure you can find the podcast, the different episodes and everything that you want from that. Kate, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Super fun to have you on. Always great to reconnect and chat. And we'll hopefully have you on an episode in the future. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's always a fun time. <laughs>